We should not let the lessons and opportunities of COVID-19 pass us by. The health white paper should be our collective statement of intent on how we can make our health system more sustainable, accessible and resilient through a whole of government and whole of society approach. Since early this year, my MOH team and I have been actively engaging a wide range of stakeholders to seek proposals on systemic healthcare reform. I will also appoint a Health White Paper Advisory Council comprising 13 diverse subject matter experts who lend their assistance in challenging and refining our policy priorities and the final draft of the white paper. There have been several good inputs from many parties, many channels, and I thank everyone who has taken the time to give their considered views. There are several ongoing programs, initiatives, and consultative platforms which are working towards addressing many of the issues that have been surfaced, and I look forward to personally engaging with all of you and with everyone else over the next few months before we table the white paper to Parliament. These established efforts should be continuously strengthened, but we also need systemic reforms on how healthcare is delivered, financed, and governed. To secure these long-term challenges, the health white paper will be focused on the most fundamental reforms to address major systemic and structural challenges by the healthcare system rather than a specific disease or an individual demographic group. This is a systems-wide reform, not an individual focus on a particular disease. And while we have been consulting a diverse range of stakeholders in developing the health white paper, we need to make sure that the plans for reforms are themselves future-proof and critically will outlast any incumbent minister. Therefore, bipartisan support for the proposed reforms within the Health White Paper is crucial, and I hope that we will all play a part in supporting its tabling to Parliament at the end of this year, inshallah. There will still be many details and plans of action that will be needed to be worked out in the immediate coming years. But your agreement and the agreement of members of parliament are vital to secure the board principles and direction of structural reforms for Malaysia's health system. Not only would this cement the moral and political position for the next 15 years of proposed reforms, but in a larger sense, it would also symbolize our collective solidarity for a future-proof healthcare system, no matter who is the Minister of Health or which party is in power. And for that, I just also wanted to say that it was important for me that from today, from the start of this discussion and deliberation, we get everyone on board. You've heard me say that I'm not a minister who likes to deliberately erase the legacy of previous ministers. If things work, they should continue to work. If things need fixing, they should be fixed. And I'm happy today that uh, my colleague, that to see Zulkifli Ahmad, former Minister of Health, is here with us. Although we're at different sides of the political divide, by participating support towards the health white paper. And later you'll be hearing from Tansi Dr. Subramanian, who I've appointed on the Health Advisory Council. Former Minister as well. He's done a lot of the Ministry of Health. This is what working together means. Health is not a political football that should be kicked about willy-nilly. Health is too important for us to be partisan about. And we must work together to secure a future-proof white paper. But to further secure these reforms, what I'm suggesting is that the health white paper will also propose a health reform commission to independently monitor, advise, and report on the status of implementation to the government, to parliament, and to the people. And having a transparent and well-appointed health reform commission, we hope that will create institutional check, checks and balances and ensure follow-through on the reforms, regardless of changes in the political sphere.